Thursday evening, San Jose Arena will host UCLA in the Western Regional. Uh, what perfect timing to bring in the greatest coach of all time, John Wooden, and the man who wrote five of John Wooden's books, Steve Jameson. Wooden, for you younger folks, I mean, I'll just say it plain and simple, his records will never be equaled, ever. This is one of those deals. There'll be no one to, to match uh, the great coach. How many national titles, Stevie? Give us a rundown. Uh, ten national championships, seven of them in a row. Yeah. 88 straight game winning streak at one point. In mm. fact, he holds the longest winning streak and the third longest, yeah. uh, 47 straight games. Records go on yeah. and on. And Steve has brought all the coaches' books, and they will be on <laughs> eBay tonight. With it. No, 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 no. Now, there's a young John Wooden. People forget. He's from Indiana, and he was a three-time All-America player. That's right. That first shot was uh, from his days when he used to crash into the wall. And he called him the Indiana Rubber Man. And there, of course, is uh, Mr. Al Cinder, and there is Coach, who I believe his last title, and he retired in 1975. Yes, sir. There he is in his den. All right. And, and we have the coach on the line, I believe. Coach from Southern California. Hello, Mr. Wooden. Yeah, hello, Mr. Wooden. Hello, sir. How are you, sir? We got Steve Jameson here. Good. Uh, yeah, good. Does, I'm glad you're having there. <laughs> <laughs> so, does Steve owe you money, or are, are you guys okay? <laughs> huh? Uh, yeah, well, good. I'm glad you're laughing. Here's what we're going to do, Coach. I want to start with the Bill Walton story in that uh, Bill Walton challenged your authority. And tell the story about the haircut when Bill came to practice one day. Well, after he was uh, his sophomore year, we'd gone undefeated for the national championship. He was player of the year, and he didn't shave or get a haircut from the end, last, last game until he reported on October the 14th the following year. And uh, he hadn't shaved. And I, he knew I wasn't going to let him do that. <laughs> he said, you don't have the right to tell me. And I said, you're absolutely correct, uh, Bill. I don't have that right to tell you how to wear your hair or whether you can shave or not. But I do have the right to determine who's going to play. We're going to miss you, Bill. <laughs> And, and the rest of the story goes, Coach, he hopped on his bike, went down and got a haircut, and showed up for practice, correct? He certainly did. All right. Yeah. Is it true that uh, Lou Alcindor, you did not recruit him? Well, <laughs> in a way, yeah. I never uh, contacted him in any way. His uh, coach contacted me right after we'd won the our first national championship in 1964 against Duke University. The coach called me after that and said he noticed I was speaking at a coaching clinic in Valley Forge, Pennsylvania later that month, and he wanted to come down and talk to me about Lewis, which he did. And he told me that UCLA is one of the five schools he wanted to visit the next year. And, and the next year we repeated. We attracted his attention by uh, beating Duke for the championship in 64, and we uh, sort of solidified his attention by beating Michigan the next year in the championship with Cassie Russell and True Goning and that group. And uh, then later that month, he made his visit and uh, committed himself to coming. Uh, and uh, I never visited him uh, at all to recruit him. Sometime later, his uh, parents asked if I would come to New York. They'd like to meet the coach for whom he was going to play. They met a lot of others, but he had already committed to UCLA, and I did go to New York. I met his parents and had dinner with him at 1 o'clock in the morning because in, in the <laughs> she was working at around his uh, father's uh, uh, schedule, work schedule, and he was working from 4 to midnight. All time. right. Hey, Steve, what you got here with Coach? Coach retired in 1975, and yet he's 96, and mm. just from listening to him here, he's still got his bounce. You, you got something you can relate to us about working with Coach? Well, you know, when we first started, Coach wanted to do a cook, cookbook, right, Coach? He <laughs> liked chicken course. fried wings. He was going to do I said, no, no, well, let's yeah. talk about your philosophy and your yeah. methodology. And then we got going 12 years ago, remember? I do. Okay, yeah, yeah. and I hope it's a good memory. But yeah. uh, working with him in a small way is like being... Uh, a member of his team because uh, he lets you know you're okay but he also lets you know you better not screw up yeah. and uh, it's a funny way he does it he's got a certain look that when you're not on the right track yeah. uh, you get a little chill down your spine coach wooden would your tough discipline work in this day and age where the kids uh, for lack of a better term like to do their own thing would you work today as well as you worked in the 60s and 70s well, you like to think you would. You don't know. You'd have to go through it. But I, I think youngsters, uh, anyone under your supervision, if you treat them fair and if you let them know by your actions, not by your words, that you really care for them for more so than just their uh, participating for you as an athlete, I think they would respond today and any day.
All right. Is there somebody who you like today? When you look at a coach, is, are there one or two that you say, yeah, that guy's doing it right? Yes, there are many. But I'm not going to name them for you, <laughs> name them for you because I'll lose out some and I'll lose a friend. Okay, fa fair enough. How about somebody you don't like? <laughs> I won't say that either. All right. Who, who do you like to win the national championship, sir? Do I like to win? I like uh, your Shelly to win. That's who I'd like to win, yes. You sound like a homer, coach. <laughs> I hope so. All right. Hey, before we go, you were just uh, uh, recently honored with the Medal of Freedom by President Bush. Where does that stand with all your honors? Well, it stands up there pretty high, but I, I recognize the fact that that's only because of the fact that I had some wonderful youngsters under my supervision while I was teaching basketball. And I know that's the reason. Uh, otherwise, uh, they wouldn't have heard of me. But uh, nevertheless, I do appreciate it very much. But the honor that I received that I uh, really, I think I earned was when I graduated from Purdue University in 1932, I received the Big Ten Academic Medal for the graduating senior athlete with a high grade point average, and I think I earned that one. I'm more proud of that than right. anything else, because anything else was earned for me by youngsters under my supervision. Coach, thanks for coming on. The book is The Essential. John Wooden, way to go, Steve Jamison. Thank you very much. And Thank thanks you. for hooking up the coach. My pleasure. My All pleasure. Right. We're back in a moment.